have beaten all Souls games without dying a single time. Do the math. That's right. Zero deaths. I have done this for years now. Zero deaths. Zero deaths. Zero deaths. Zero deaths. Zero deaths. I have never died in a video game ever in my life. Zero. Zero death. Zero. Zero. People all over the world are amazed by my great gaming skills. That impressive how Pewds got a zero death run first time playing. The most impressive thing is that he had zero deaths. Wow, I can't believe zero deaths. But some people think I'm a liar, and they say my zero death runs are fake, and that I actually die all the time. This sort of uh -oh. behavior is completely unacceptable. Okay, fine. Maybe I die once, maybe twice, maybe 500. What? No! No, 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 no! What happened? Zero! That does not count because my, uh, I, uh, the girl. Wow, zero defeats fake lol. He is fake, this is no zero death purged video. Zero deaths? Lies. What shameless clickbait. But I have decided my days of living like a fraud is over. My name is PewDiePie, and I'm going to beat Elden Ring with zero deaths for real this time. Okay. Okay, I may need a plan. But first off, we need to lay some rules. What are the rules? Who can say the N word? What are the rules? I really wanna say the N Rule one is obviously zero death. If game says I die, I die. It's that simple. At least you'd think it'd be that simple. At the very start of the game, before you've done anything, you're greeted by the Grafted Skyon boss. It's one of those bosses that is just there to humiliate you. Welcome to the game, you're dead. Congratulations, now you can keep going. Okay, so what if you just try hard enough and kill the boss that you're not supposed to kill in the beginning? Will that be zero deaths? No, because if you move on further, you literally just fall off a cliff and die. Fine, kill the damn boss again. Don't go in the cliff that collapses. Turns out there's nowhere to go, and the only way to progress is to die. If I have to die here, I might as well just jump off right away anyway, right? But this is clearly a zero death rule break. The best way to deal with this is the best way to deal with anything in life, which is just get naked and hope for the best. So even though the health bar technically goes to zero, the game doesn't go out of its way to say that you died. Therefore, zero death run still possible. No, you died, Tex. Zero death applies. That's rule one. I actually went to double check this because even though you can never see exactly how much health you have, if you open up the status menu and keep it open while he hits you, you actually see your health going down to one, not zero. So technically what that means is zero death applies. Rule number two is no summons. I think they're a cool addition to the game, but the point of this is for me to beat the game, not my sexy twin, okay? Rule number three, no fundamentally game-breaking glitches. The wrong warp is a great example if you rest at the Belfry Tower of Grace and do a little bit of game-breaking. The game will place you in the end game and you have successfully skipped at least five non-optional bosses. So rule break. Last rule, don't use any weapons that are completely broken or overpowered. I will use some cheesy strats, but to completely rely on just seems kind of lame. Okay, so I have the rules, I have the challenge. Now I just got to figure out how to execute it. And for the record, I'm not good at these games. And what I was about to find out was that I was even worse than I thought I was. So I made a plan. Step one, make my weapon as powerful as possible, as quick as possible. That way on the first bosses, I can go from doing this to this. Before we continue, I should warn you, I am going to bombard you with information about this game. Things that you may already know or you have not even played this game at all. But I'm going to tell you anyway. The weapon I'll be using is the Moonwell Katana. I know, I know, it's not the best Katana in the game, but it does enough damage. And it can do damage on range, which is super useful against some annoying enemies. But my favorite is that it can stagger bosses very easily. Oh, and you can also get it very early, which is necessary. So yeah, for those plebs who don't know, you need somber stones to upgrade your weapon. Otherwise, it's useless. These are scattered all across the map, some being easier to find than others. One to five is actually pretty easy to find. Some people use the Belfry Tower cheat that I told about earlier to get eight and nine. I obviously can't do this, but I find you can get them without cheating. They're literally right next to each other, so we're good. This leaves just six and seven. In Academy of Rhea Lucaria, there's a secret passageway down under, and if you let mommy eat you, you get teleported to Magma Manor. It should be called that. Okay, I don't care what anyone says. 
says. You can easily pick up number six, and with a little bit of parkour, you can pick up number seven. Bada bing, bada boom, you got the best weapon in the- Stop! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> you actually have to die to do that, so I- it, I can't do that. So I looked into other methods, and this Falling Star Beast actually drops Summer Stone number six, and it's accessible in the early game. So I started practicing it. I'm not doing 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 it. So instead of worrying about my weapon for now, I started worrying about the last four bosses, which is going to be the biggest challenge no matter what. Malekith, Godfrey, Radagon, Elden Beast. If I really wanted to do a zero death playthrough, I knew I needed to master these four bosses. The first of the four bosses is Beast Clergyman, or Malekith, as he transformed into. And on my first playthrough, I actually got him on the first try. First try. <laughs> I guess I wasn't technically first trying to think about it more. I rolled off. <laughs> That's fucking game. The thing is, on this playthrough, I was heavily relying on my summon to tank all the damage. I had spent about 80 hours in the game, and I was much, much higher level. And without all that, I couldn't even make it a phase two. And once I finally made it to phase two, it was like a punch in the face. All his attacks comes out of nowhere. He flies all over the place. Everything kills me at an instant. Even if I know an attack is coming, I don't know how to dodge it. This fucking thing that he does took me so long to figure out how to dodge. And every time I fail, I had to redo phase one just to practice phase two. Once I finally beat him once, I was done. I was ready to move on practicing another boss. Coming up next was Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, and I gotta come clean about something here, guys. Before the boss, you might notice there's a bunch of blood pools of people dying. This is because people try and jump this pillar. What happens is if you do it successfully, then stand in the right spot and quit out the game. Once the game loads up again, you'll have run into the boss room without activating the boss and you can literally just run past him. However, this never worked for me, no matter how many times I tried it. I think it has something to do with my computer, but honestly, I'm really glad it didn't. This jump, it's just a stupid risk because it's easy to mess up, and I'd be skipping one of the coolest bosses in the game. Unlike Malekith, Godfrey still hits hard, but his moves are pretty easy to predict. And this time I used a different approach of just timing myself and not trying to kill him, just to see how long I could stay alive. I quickly went from less than a minute to two minutes to then even four and beyond. And I finally rebuilt some confidence that I had lost from Malekith. I was then ready to move on to the last two bosses, Radagon and the Elden Beast. And guess what? I got my ass handed to me again. Radagon is really tough. His moves are either super fast or super slow, and it seems to be impossible to determine what he's gonna do. And if you mess up just once, you lose your tempo, and then it's easy to mess up again. And it's not until you finally beat Radagon that the Elden Beast will show up. I actually thought I was doing okay on this until he pulled out the most bullshit move in the entire game, which is the chasing star things. You have to keep running away from them to dodge them, but he'll keep attacking you like normal. I can't see what the hell is going on, and every time he did it, I would just die. I felt the learning curve harder than ever here. I had spent about a week and a half, and by now I knew exactly what I needed to do to beat this game with zero death. But it turned out to be so much harder and so much more work than I had initially anticipated. There's so many bosses that I hadn't even tried at this point. There was still the Fire Giant, Godskin Duo, Rikard, and Morgut, just to name a few. I kept thinking I should just give up. But the thing about these games is that the more you play them, the better you get. And the better you get, the more fun they are to play. I just kept coming back. I try to not worry too much about the goal of zero death at this point and practice every boss just a tiny bit. And even at times I didn't think I could improve, I was still coming back stronger every time. These games get a lot of flack for being too difficult, but it's also very clear that the game wants you to learn. There's a way to respond to everything there is in the game. It's just about finding out what that is and once you do, you feel like you're the boss instead. It's a little cringe, but I felt like I was finally getting there. So it was time for me to do my first live attempt. I've been playing Elden Ring. I'm here to beat the game with zero deaths. For real. Oh gosh, what do I do? Fuck. Well, it was a good try. <laughs> I failed after 30 minutes because I aggroed an enemy by mistake. Attempt 2 it actually did pretty well. I had managed to stay alive for about 3 hours at this point and made it to the fire giant. I quit out the boss 2 times and failed 2 times to do so. And it was getting very anxious. I have never missed so much in my entire life. Let me leave. <laughs> no. 
not good. The fail quit that I got as well. That is not good, but I have the thing. It's fine. The built-up pressure after three hours is something that I had not anticipated, and I just totally failed. I hate this boss! On a side note, I've seen some of the dumbest takes ever about Elden Ring's UX and UI, but I think we can all agree on that no one wants this text winner to appear when you're jumping up on your horse. It looks like you're about to die here. Are you sure you want to jump up on your horse? Yes or no? If you don't answer, you're dead. If you do answer, you're dead. <laughs> yes, I want to enter the goddamn horse! <laughs> what do you think? I can blame the game all I want, but the truth is I played terribly. On attempt three, I was back on the fire giant. I had practiced him a lot now, but there was one attack that he did that I wasn't really sure how to dodge. And it's when he blows fire out of his mouth. And of course, he does it the last goddamn second. <laughs> You know I'm pissed off when the Swede comes out. Spoilers, I kept dying. <sighs> Jesus. I might die. I might die. We're okay. We're okay. Okay, that's the worst part. Are you serious? Oh, I did it. Oh god. Ooh. No! What? Ah, oh, number two. Oh, what? You fucking big baby bitch. <laughs> I had spent all my time and effort worrying about the hardest bosses. What am I doing? So not practicing the easy ones meant I kept making dumb mistakes. Fucking break! Fuck, he did the explosion. This it's meant having to redo runs that I had spent between two to three hours on. And not to mention all the random death that seemed to keep happening. No, I got stuck somehow. I just couldn't seem to get it. And every time I failed, I wasn't just disappointed in myself, but it also felt like I disappointed everyone watching. I wanted to do one attempt where I do it offline so I could just focus on the game and at least then I can show you guys everything I have to redo every time I die. I'll warn you, it'll be a lot, but I want to be thorough with it because that's what I would want if I watched it. So if you're ready, here we go. I use Samurai Class just because it has good base stats with the weapon I want to use. Pick the greatest name of all time, then Golden Seed as starting item, just for the extra heal. Sorry about the awkwardness of me sitting in the dark. I just thought people would question if this was my footage otherwise. I know I'm supposed to let him hit me, but I can't help but fight back a little bit. Grab this bonfire because we're coming back to it in like two hours. <laughs> I still call them bonfire, whatever, Grace. Grab this bonfire, then we get our horse after she queefs on us. Uh, I queef. Why yes I am, 12. Hit this guy, very important. It's like the shortest bonfire distance ever, but we are coming back here in like an hour. We cross the bridge and there we find our first somber smithing stone. I am aware you can just buy these, but all of them are in the route that I have. I'm, I feel like I might as well just pick them up. It doesn't matter. Then we run over to the first dungeon in the game. It's like the first dungeon and they put a trap to put you in the end game for players that just stumble upon this chest. It's so mean. <laughs> And you can't even teleport out if you get here. Anyway, it's good for us because we don't have to run as far. I was supposed to stealth out of here, but I kind of messed it up and almost died. But we're fine. We can get back on our horse torrent and start running. This swamp is great because we find our spell and staff that we need to kill our first boss in order to get our actual weapon. Rock sling and then the meteorite staff. Grab this bonfire nearby because we need to head north, but later on we'll head south. And on the way, what's that? Number four, baby. That's right. It's almost like we don't have to buy them. We keep going north to head to one of the caves. I hate this tunnel. You saw me die here earlier. But anyway, here's number two. Yeah, just pick it up. It's literally on the way. Why not? <laughs> okay, so here's the scary bit. You could grab these runes if you want, but the most important thing is the golden foot that's down here. They literally come at you all at once. Don't panic, keep running, keep running, keep running. Honestly, it's not even that bad of a part, but losing 10 minutes just kind of sucks. And the fact that I've died here before just makes you way more nervous when you're doing it. Don't judge me too hard on this, all right? I need to kill Alexander to get his talisman. His talisman is really good. It makes your weapon skill even better. If you don't want to kill him, you can do his quest line and he gives you a better version of the talisman. But we don't have time for that. So just killing him is the only way. I'm sorry. Conveniently, the back of this cage goes exactly where we want to go. Gotta kill that wolf, very important. It's the third church of Marika. We get our sacred tear and our first physics drink. You might have seen this trick already where there's a secret portal hidden right behind it. Now we've basically gone even deeper into Kaylee, the area from earlier. Here we pick up a golden seed, which is great. And uh, <laughs> a starlight shard. We need that for a boss later. Am I explaining too much? Whatever. 
If we run down the hill, we see our first boss, the Knight's Cavalry, and this trick is actually really cool. This boss is clearly too high level for us, but you can trick him to jump towards you, which makes him fall off the bridge and die, which is always hilarious and super satisfying. But it's also very easy to get stuck or just mess up. The amount of weird shit he's doing, what the fuck? So I learned this trick from one of you guys in the chat, and it's even funnier. So basically, you make him follow you all the way up the way you came, and all these poison clans will hit him. So I immediately thought this trick had something to do with the poison. And as soon as you enter the top of the hill and he followed you the entire way there, he'll eventually teleport back to where he spawns. And then you'll just see the text saying that he died. It's so confusing, no one had a good answer to why they thought this happened. First we thought it was the poison that maybe killed his horse, and the horse dies, so when he teleports back, he falls off the horse and dies. But someone made a, a really good point, which is the fact that these games are optimized to not load in things that you are not looking at. And when we're on top of the hill, we're not looking down on the bridge anymore. So once he teleports back to the bridge, he's teleporting back into nothing and he just falls and dies. <laughs> I, I love that theory, and I think it's true, actually. I just wish I could see it. I know this is a very cheesy strat, but it's too good not to use. We also get Bloodhound Step, which is super essential for later. And 42 big ones. Hell yeah. There's actually three things we need from this bonfire, but they're all in different directions, so it's a bit awkward on what we do first. Spend a few points leveling up. Then we're gonna kill the old paralyzed dragon. This is everyone's favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because people enter the stream here and they don't know what's going on and people are just so confused Why I'm hitting a fucking blob for five minutes <laughs> as you can see we do practically no damage But our weapon luckily has bleed on it. So whenever that hits it does a ton of damage So eventually he goes down. It just takes a while before he dies We pop the golden foot that we got earlier for that extra XP then we're off to the round table hold for the first time The reason we're here is to activate bloodhound step, which we got earlier We then teleport back to the swamp area, but this time we're heading south instead. There's the starlight shard get the rotten breast spell Back to the third church of Marika, and now we're heading south instead. You can pick up these crystal tears, they're not really that good, but they're on the way, I, why not? Same thing with this merchant, he's on the way, he sells sleeper arrows. We don't necessarily need that many, but he's right there, he's on the way, it don't matter. We're heading to this castle, that's where we really want to go. Before we enter, we pick up this golden seed. So yeah, this is the spot where I, you saw me die earlier, because there's a blood knight or something up here on the left. And since I died here before, I'm always super nervous running up, seeing if he follows me or not. He is, but he's way too slow, so we're totally fine. Up here, we find the first half of the medallion, which is necessary to progress in the game. And I decided to sacrifice my runes to get out of there, it's just not worth it. And we're back to finish up the last two things that we need by this bonfire. First, we're heading down. If you remember earlier, when I was talking about Somberstone 8 and 9, this is where you get them. So this one drops number 8. The best way to deal with them is just push him off the cliff. <laughs> I love doing it. <laughs> I don't have to do this parkour jump. It's very easy, but it still makes me nervous, because if I mess up, I technically die. And again, it's not a speed run, but I don't know, it'd be kind of lame to just run around the whole the goddamn thing. Down here is a rune arc, which we'll definitely need later, but it's also, most importantly, Somberstone number 9, as you can see. This Somberstone is not on the Elden Ring wiki, by the way, so there you go, a secret for you. And then we teleport back to the same bonfire for the last time. This time, though, we're heading into the castle behind us, where we find the other half of the medallion from earlier. Betty be boo But wait, we're not done here. We're actually heading deeper in. I've learned my lesson to use Bloodhound Step here. Get Radagon's Sword Seal, which is a great talisman, and then we're off. Back to Limgrav. Get the Starlight Shard. Get the Bowden Bee. We'll come back here later. The next 30 minutes is pretty much just running around, and as boring as that is, I always feel really good being here. Because there's pretty much nothing that can kill us for a very long time, so I get to breathe out a little bit here. You have to stab this wolf. Church of Irit, get that tear. We're picking up whatever upgrades we can on the way, you know. We're running this secret pass to skip the first two bosses. We'll come back when we're a bit stronger. Grab the bond, we'll come back here. Through the portal again. I have died from this stupid jump, so it gives me anxiety every time. Pick up some runes, because we're a pickup gang like that. We get the key, and then we get the fuck out. Hey, remember how I said there's no more scary bits anymore? Well, I forgot to kill a boss, so we had to go back here. Just setting up, and then we're good to go. I used to hate this boss, because he's easy to mess up, and at this point, you spent 30 to 40 minutes that you don't want to redo. Trust me. His attacks are super slow. You can stagger him with rock sling. Unless he pulls out some surprises, which he definitely can. He's not that bad. See, he charged me there, but I was lucky with the stagger. And we got our Moonwell, baby. I felt so confident here. It felt really good. Now we can continue the stuff that we need to do by the lake. First, we head east and we pick up a Talisman. We get the Talisman and then we head back. Now it's time to do the Magma Manor quest. 
suck. Swore! We just need to get a necklace back from this lobster dude. We just gotta pay him a thousand runes and then we're done with the quest. And now we can progress. This is the area that we needed a key for. We'll come back here. There's a secret merchant down this way. He sells the same sleeper arrows that we got earlier, just way more of them. Now we head through the other gate. Another church, another upgrade. We need to go to the giant structure on the right. But before we do that, we can pick up number three. That's right, pick up gang. Pick up the bonfire and then we head through the elevator. This is why we grabbed the two medallion parts earlier, because otherwise you're not allowed to pass. Posture girl can now get us to Magma Manor. Get that bonfire. Join the mama family. Secret door, you probably know about it. Sneak gang. I love this area. I think it's the coolest looking in the game. We have some parkour to do here. It's super easy, but I'm always so nervous because if I mess it up, I will die, so. That bloodhound step is coming very handy right now. Just surfing the lava waves is whatever. No big deal. So yeah, now we're finally where I was talking about earlier, where you can get all the stones very easily. We're still way too low level to be here, so you gotta be a little bit careful. Number five, pick up gay. All right, guys, don't judge me, okay? <laughs> At this point, I will have the best weapon, and I feel confident I can easily kill this boss. The thing is, I don't have to. I can just cheese him. Why not? Okay, why not? Why risk it? It's a bullshit boss. I don't care. Now, think about it. I definitely have enough arrows to just sleep him anyway, so... But anyway, if you do this ritual before you enter, you can glitch him out and just smack his ass as much as you want. He ain't gonna do nothing. And I swear, it's more fun doing this than actually trying the boss, so... <laughs> Zero death! Yeah! <laughs> I forgot, we haven't picked up seven yet. Just a little bit of parkour. Got on the first try. Everything looking good. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, don't judge me. <laughs> Listen, this is not a rule break. I can quit out. I try to not do it, because uh, it basically makes enemies not aggro on you. People use it all the time in speedruns and stuff like that. It's a little lame, but fuck, I'm, I'm not restarting an hour just because he randomly grabs me, okay? Lame? Sure. Rule break? No. Zero death? Yes. So we take the elevator from the boss room again. Oh, I love this area. It looks so good with the lava. But I'm always scared running it. I hate running past this Iron Maiden and I get stuck. Trying to not freak out, but we made it in fine. It's alright. A little bit more running and we find the portal to Riker's boss room. We're not gonna fight him right away. In fact, we're gonna go back to the very start. Oh yeah, we can almost max out our weapon now. Which is pretty damn sweet. I love clicking these. Sorry, now we head back. It's a little annoying we have to deal with this invasion event, but we also get to try out our new weapon, so it's kind of fun too. Head into the cage nearby, meet the best character in the game, and I kill him by mistake. Oops. <laughs> Luckily, we can still buy his items over here. I'm so glad they have this feature. He sells three golden foot, which is amazing, and Margaret's shackle, which is great for the boss. Now, finally, it's time to slap the first boss's ass. Seeing how much I struggled on this boss the first time, it feels so damn good every single time to do this amount of damage on him. You're dead. And we get a talisman pouch, so now we can add our Radagon seal finally. You take more damage if you wear it, but you also gain more health and you deal more damage. I feel like the cost is pretty neg- Oh god. The cost is pretty neg- I'll come back to that one. It's time to enter the castle and you get to go either the secret route or the main gate. But the main gate is by far superior. I always wonder why people kill him, but apparently he steals your runes, so... This part is super easy because we have Bloodhound Step, otherwise it's a pain in the neck. So, it's around 12 o'clock for me here, so I decided to take a break. I don't know if that's cheating or not, but uh, I was... I'm tired. <laughs> Day two, baby! And if it's not obvious that I took a break here... <laughs> I forgot that I hadn't beaten the boss yet, so I'm running into this area that I can't progress in yet. So yeah, after running all the way, here's when I realized, oh yeah, I haven't done the boss. <laughs> Oops. So I had to go back all the way to this boss, just because the game didn't save my bonfire for whatever reason. Alright, so we have to run deeper into the castle, and we have to run past all these guards. It's just quicker that way, and honestly, I think it's less risk just trying to run past them. But to be honest, Running this bit, even with Bloodhound Step, is really scary, because it's just such a mess. You have the crossbows and everything just shooting at you. Just keep running, keep running, keep running. There's the elevator here that we need to grab. A dog snook in, and I hate them, but thankfully we have the Moonwheel, so no problem. Up we go. 
Next up is Godric, and I actually think he's easier than the boss we just fought, just because he's a bit more scripted. So he does certain moves when he's healthy at a certain point. But honestly, any boss is easy when we have this weapon at this point. You know, this guy talks a lot for being dead. Now we have to do the run that I did by mistake earlier. It takes a while, but it's definitely worth it. I can't believe I played the entire game the first time without even knowing about this. Godric's great rune, baby. To use it, we have to activate a rune arc that we collected earlier. Except I'm a goddamn idiot. <laughs> I've done this mistake so many times. You have to equip the rune first. Luckily, we can just buy it off the old ladies. It's okay. All right, activate the rune this time. It makes it so that all our stats are increased by five, which is insane. The cost is that if you die, you lose this ability. But lucky for us, we got no intentions of doing that. Coolest boss room and maybe even boss in the entire game coming up. We are way too low level for this boss, but you get this weapon, which basically makes him into easy mode. Finally, we use our Starlight Shard. They give you mana over time. It's so we don't have to worry about drinking during the fight because we're not gonna have any time to do that except using this attack over and over and over. It's very cheesy. I think it's fine. This is a gimmick boss after all. The thing is, I cannot make any mistakes. If I miss my timing with half a second, there's enough time for him to attack me and instantly kill me. But as long as I'm spamming this attack over and over, he can't really do anything. So this looks super simple, but it is a high risk pulling this off with zero deaths at least. My Starlight Shard eventually runs out, so the only time I have to drink is right here when he gets staggered. Then I can finish him off again. He's dead, but not yet, so I use my second Starlight Shard before phase two. Same thing, except now I have to move backwards a tiny bit between every strike that I do. I can't go too far because then I'll miss, and if I miss, I'll die. But I can't do go too close because then the lava will hit me, and if I hit the lava, I die. So it's a bit of a dance, which keeps it interesting, but it is... It is what it is. <laughs> and he's dead! Using the gold foot here, and we get ourselves a shit ton of runes. Almost 200k just from that. God damn! Hey, remember this area? Well, now we can actually progress through this area without talking to the lady. Mainly, we're just gonna have to run around here, grab some random items where we can find them. There's a ton of upgrades in this area. Just gotta watch out for these trebuchet catapults. They will instantly kill you. It's always scary running past stuff like this, even though the risk is low. So we're not quite inside yet. We just need to enter one more level of walls. Morgan returns here for the second time. I think it's a secret boss and it's really not necessary to kill him. He's just in my path that I'm going through anyway and he drops a decent talisman, so whatever, I'll kill him. Two golden seeds and then two more right after. We're now ready to enter the city. But first we gotta kill this tree sentinel boss that guards the gate. There's no way to enter without killing him, so we sneak up behind him. And I don't know if you guys remember the talisman that we grabbed earlier. <laughs> it basically just make it possible for us to use the Rotten Breath. It's super overpowered, this spell. It does damage over time, and I think it takes half his health if we just decide to run away. So you can just use the Rotten Breath, wait a couple minutes, and then do the same thing again. But that's just kind of lame. I know how to kill this guy. Like here, for example, I can just run away and he will die eventually, but I decide to have some fun with it. He is really fun to play with this boss. You just dodge this one? Later than you think, and it's actually super easy to dodge. I decided to finish him up here. 
And now we can proudly run into the city, making it somewhat towards the end game. We'll be coming back here later. This jump is easy, but it makes me anxious. Get naked here for the aesthetic. No, it's just so I can jump these roofs easier. It definitely helps to be naked when you're doing that. Nailed it. Now we can just run past the guards. It shouldn't be any problem. It's kind of funny how much time I spent in the city the first time and then you just <laughs> blast through everything. Dude, I love this area. Running up the dragon's wing is so cool. This game is insane. There's just a shit ton of running here. There's not much to say about it. There's not much to worry about either. Nothing really pops out of nowhere to kill you. And I always forget this boss. I don't know why. It's an identical boss to Godfrey, except it's way easier. I think since it's easier, it's actually kind of harder in a weird way. He's slower, so the tempo that I'm used to practicing is way off. And if he hits me with a 1-2, I'm dead, so I always try and be way more careful than I need to be. And dead, baby. Another talisman pouch, nice. Now we can wear Radagon again. <laughs> I need my stats to be a certain level at this point. I can't do too much damage on this boss because it breaks my entire flow that I have set up for him. You'll see now anyway. So we will enter and then just leave right away. We'll use Marga's shackle that we got from the bald guy that I killed by accident. And if you use it outside the boss room, uh, you basically... Uh, it's not a cheat. Uh, it's just a little cool magic trick. Yeah. <laughs> so as long as I don't hit him directly, he will just keep staying there until his health bar goes to around 50%. And before we allow that to happen, we'll blow Rotten Breath right in his fucking face. This is the last boss that I will cheese. I promise. I promise. Don't judge me. I feel like I could kill him easily anyway. Right? Yeah. I have died on him before, so I'm always nervous. Luckily, I have enough mana to use my Bloodhound step. I didn't use it there for whatever reason. All I have to do now is stay alive and don't get hit. Even though I cheesed it, I'm still hyped about it. <laughs> Fucking got him. Give the tree a little sniff. Talk to Queef Lady. Unfortunately, I gotta do this jump again. I hate doing it, but it's worth it. And phew, we're fine. <laughs> and now we're heading this way instead to the elevator that we just got access to. Sneak gang. There's a fire talisman here for the fire giant later, which I wish I knew about a long time ago. <laughs> we're just gonna make it across this bridge, then we're off to the winter area. Winter area? The snow area. But not without humiliating this guard. <laughs> I don't have to kill him. It's just fun, okay? <laughs> and down we go. Even the most baby level of jumps makes me nervous at this point. After two hours of meticulously trying to not die, everything makes me anxious, man. Bada bing. Going up the grand elevator. First time I played through this game, I got clear blue skies and this area looked incredible. It's really cool to play this game again and see how it changes just based on the weather being different. As much as I hate bridges, I gotta admit this bridge looks goddamn good, man. I don't know why this area feels so barren. There's just so much running through that you have to do. I'm pretty sure I don't need any more of those. Pass the ice lake, ignore the dragon, find the church. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the best. Marissa comes in. Look how focused I am. <laughs> <laughs> she comes in and waves Maya in my face, making her kick me as a joke. <laughs> anyway, I just thought it was funny. But clearly not at the time. Jesus Christ, look at my face. I'm so focused. This area is so cool. Rip bird. After about 15 minutes of running, we finally make it to the fire giant. But before we deal with him, there's a really important item that I want to grab. Not that. Not that either. I really don't like this area. So I can't just run through it, but it's... 
way safer for me to just deal with all of these one by one. And here's the item that I want. It's the bubble tier. It's for the last boss when he uses the chasing stars. It makes it so that I get healed instead of taking damage from them. Complete game changer. So as risky as it is to try and grab it, it's definitely worth it. Now, I'm ready for my arch nemesis, the fire giant. Put on that fire resistance and let's go. Since I fail him so many times, there's nothing he can throw at me at this point. I know exactly how to deal with this dude. Get the stagger, keep tickling his toes. Just gotta watch out for his balls. This is very risky, but I knew I could trigger phase two quick. This is so satisfying. I get to blow run breath right in his fucking face. Eat shit. So my new strategy is to use rock sling from earlier until he staggers. And I get it right away. I was like, yeah, I got you now. Slice his face open. All I have to do now is stay alive. There it is, baby. Zero dips! And I used a golden foot, one of my last two, for that extra XP. Felt so goddamn good. We commit the cardinal sin of touching an unwedded maiden, and now we're in the goddamn endgame. So much work to not even get to the hardest bosses yet. <laughs> oh, hey, Summerstone 9. I really need that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> now it's time for the Godskin duo. I used to think they were the hardest boss in the game, but we have a trick for it. But first, we got to go back to the very first bonfire that we grabbed. <laughs> Told you we'd be back here in two hours. It really doesn't look like it, but you can jump down here totally fine without dying. And... We find another golden foot, another secret hidden merchant. Just taking this chance to sell off everything I've collected so far. Very minimalist playthrough, I know. Most importantly, the bow that he sells is what we need. It's on, baby. I love this fight. So try and get three arrows in right away and I get the sleeping effect. Get another arrow in right away on this second guy. Start slapping him and do as much damage as possible before he wakes up. And I gotta put a lot of trust that this stagger happens, and it does. He's dead. Now I gotta deal with his friend in the exact same way as before. Get the bleed, back off, get the stagger. You're dead, son. Now it gets a little tricky, because I have to sleep the chubby guy really fast. For some reason, I think he has more health the second time he spawns. I don't know what's up with it, but it means that I have to start attacking him while the animation of him falling asleep is still happening. Otherwise, I don't have enough time to kill him. Everything's working out perfectly here. I knew I had this boss.
Now I just gotta finish up the slim guy. For some reason, I took it very carefully here, and it meant I got hit twice. <laughs> but, yeah, it's fine. He's dead. It don't matter. Going to struggle so much on a boss to then just have complete control is so satisfying. I know some people think using the sleeper arrows is a cheesy way to beat them. It's a complete bullshit boss without it. I don't mind using them for even a second. Moving on, we have some of the worst running that I have to do in the game. And it's always fun to do that at the very end stage, isn't it? <laughs> it's this area with the birds. It's just awful. If you played it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Luckily, Bloodhound Step coming in with a clutch for the last time. I would not be able to do this without it. I would have to quit out constantly otherwise. I don't know. It's just so bad. The dragon keeps spamming these lightning attacks and you're just hoping something doesn't hit you. He blows his fucking breath on me too. Like, gr great. Thanks a lot. Eventually, he just disappears though, so it's fine. And I get to grab the last Somber Stone in the game. Finally, we get to max out. They really want you to die here, don't they? Bloodhound step here as well. So good. And then we take the elevator up to what I think is the hardest boss. Malachi. But first, we gotta max out our weapon, of course. Always feels good. Ignoring my poker face, my adrenaline is running high here, man. This is the furthest I've gotten ever with these playthroughs. Malekith is my barrier. It's this weird dance that I have to do him because I want to make him staggered on phase two. I build it up slowly by keep attacking him in phase one, but I can't do it too fast because then it triggers too early and I can't do it too slow because then I'm screwed. But everything is just going perfectly here. That was so fucking clean. I decided to commit. This fucker's going down. He's about to do the double spinny attack. It's so fast, and if anything hits me, I'm dead. Use my absolute last resources, and I get another last stagger. I'm so fucking hyped. First time in two hours I show any form of emotion. <laughs> This is the furthest I've ever gotten, and I really didn't have to do this, but I knew there was a health talisman down here, and I figured, hey, if I'm gonna do this, I might as well go all out. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't shitting myself trying to make this jump. <laughs> so unnecessary, dude. Next up is Gideon. I haven't really spoken about him because he's supposed to be the easiest boss in the game. It's easy, but he needs to die fast, and I can't let him heal- Ah, oh, god damn it. <laughs> Dying from Gideon would be the worst thing possible at this point. Hit that bleed on the last one, he's done! Now there's only three bosses left. I'm fucking hype. Next up is Godfrey. I quit out right away because the second time you enter, he starts up further away. This is a little nicer way to set it up, but yeah. I just had to keep my head cool at this point. When he puts the axe in the ground, he always moves towards you. So you have to dodge it. <sighs> I got greedy there. I 
can only attack him when he swings the axe three times. And he kept fucking doing it twice. So I do minimal damage on him here. Finally. Now I just have to keep my distance. This really sucks because I dodged it too early and he grabs me. I decided to quit out. I know that's a little lame, but it also means I got to restart everything. Finally phase two. I cannot mess up like that again. No way. Eventually, this bitch went down. Hell yeah. Thy I love that quote. Let's go. After two hours and 40 minutes, it's time for the last boss. I have my starlight shard ready for each of the faces, so I am ready as ever for this. I can get one shot at this. No quit ads possible. So fucking clean. Get that last starlight shard in. It actually didn't activate in time and I didn't even notice. But somehow because of it, I got confidence to attack him more than ever and I managed to stagger him. Never seen this before. Activate that goddamn shard this time, please. So now he goes up in the air, and I need to run towards 11 o'clock-ish. It'll make sense in a second. If I do it right, I can get a couple extra hits in. The problem is, I've forgotten to attach my Uchigatana, which has the Bloodhound step on it. So I had to do that instead. So he managed to escape without me attacking him here. I hate this attack. I got greedy. He pulls out the chasing stars. Luckily the bubble tear comes to the rescue.
I knew I wouldn't get him all the way down. But I didn't think I'd be this fucking close. Jesus Christ. That means he gets to go up in the sky again for the last time. Go. Zero! Zero day! There you go. The deed is done. Zero death. I know this run wasn't perfect, and I did use some cheap strategies here and there. I know there will be some people that will have problems, but technically, this is my own challenge, so I get to make my own rules. At the end of the day, I am fucking thrilled that I got this. As much as I wish it was live with you guys, it was a huge moment. Doing something that I actually didn't know if I could do or not. Thank you to Marcia for putting up with me being a hermit for a week. <laughs> and to some friends of mine for giving me input here and there. I also gotta give shout out to these three channels because I watched a lot of their live streams and it helped a ton. I know now from doing this and you as well for watching a ridiculous amount about a video game. It has absolutely no practical value whatsoever. I can't think of anything more meaningless, but I gotta say, at that moment when I hit that goal, it definitely meant something. This is the last video I'm making before I move. Actually, in Sweden, we hold our thumbs. <laughs> so this video felt like a season finale, if you will. As always, appreciate your support. It was really fun working on this and editing it and doing the whole thing. It felt very old school. So in that spirit, <laughs> hit that bro. Congratulations, all NordVPN click linkers in the description. We already know for a six billion times what a VPN does. It hides you from people and protecting you from people spying and stealing your data. Now, NordVPN is now more than VPN. They're introducing a new really cool feature called threat protection. You can just turn it on. You don't need to be connected to a VPN to actually use this feature. It gives you another level of protection included in what's already a really great service. So basically, if you ever go on a website, they have a bunch of ads. Not only are they super annoying, but they can also sometimes be harmful. So if you accidentally click on one of them, you can mess up your computer. So threat protection blocks these ads, so you don't have to even look at it. They also scan every single download that you do to make sure that it isn't malware. So if someone sends you a suspicious file, threat protection will take care of it. Also, it protects you from websites collecting data on you and building profiles. It's one of those things that people tell you, they're like, you know, all these websites collect data from you, right? And I'm like, yeah, all right, whatever. And then they go, well, actually, you know, they make a ton of money out of you. It's like, no, I can't do that. Activate threat protection. I will not let this happen. It protects you from phishing attempts and giving you a safer, cleaner, and more private web experience. If you use the link in the description, you get a huge discount on a two-year plan, plus one month for free. You're welcome, and you can try it out for 30 days with a money-back guarantee. So if you don't like it, yeah, 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 try it out, link in the description.